Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Link. And I'm here alone this week at the round table of dim lighting. I'm holding down the fort. You know, I went out of town and uh, Rhett did an episode without me. And I'm like, okay, all right, fine. F I can do that too. I can do that too. Uh, and I'm doing that now. And uh, I appreciate you listening and giving me your best wishes as we embark on the solo journey of potential chaos. Jenna, are you ready for this? I am. I know that uh, we put out a prompt saying, hey, it's your, it's, it's your chance to ask me questions and uh, Rhett doesn't get to weigh in. So let's see what y'all got for me. We're gonna dig into some voicemails, we're gonna dig into some, some tweets, and uh, I'm an open book. I guess it depends on where you want to go. Let's just let's let's click into this voicemail. Oh yeah, and I have to hit play here too. I'm ready. Hey Link, I hey. think Sam's Club, which is obviously the best place to ask you something. Um, I was wondering how you choose your frames, your glasses frames, because um, I know it can be a very personal thing very specific. So I was wondering what factors inspire you to pick your glasses frames and why you choose what you choose. Um, yeah, I thought that'd be a great question. Okay, bye. Thanks for thinking of me in the Sam's Club. I mean, there's so many things that you could think of. Everywhere you're looking, there's bulk versions of stuff. At least that's my understanding. It's been a long time since I've been in like the bulk version of Walmart. Um, even Costco. And am I saying that right? Every time I say Costco, people are like, you say that funny. You say Costco funny. But is there anybody here today who would say that? No. Costco, right, Jenna? Right. That's exactly how you say it. <laughs> Costco. Um, did you just did correct me? Did I say a difference? Did no. you, I think you just corrected me. No, I said it how I thought you were saying it, and I... And Costco. I'm not hearing Costco. They Costco. Said, yeah, I feel like I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> Christy came home the other day and she was, um, uh, she said, I went to Costco with a friend of mine. And we don't, you know, we don't, we don't really do Costco. I think it's because we don't have space to store multiple of stuff. And my garage is very important. You just can't throw multiple of stuff in my garage and me be okay with it unless it's behind a, a closed cabinet. And all those cabinets are allocated. So this is my life and this is my garage. And if my garage isn't right, my life ain't right. So I'm not happy about Costco when I heard that Christy had gone. Now there's one exception. I got cases of Topo Chico just, just piled up in my garage. But I do it in a neat way. I do it in an orderly, way and so whenever I walk by it, I have this sense of security. No matter what goes down in the world, I have at least, I don't know, anywhere from two to probably a six week supply of Topo Chico at any moment. Like that 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 keeps me that keeps me on the on the, on my path. On my meandering path. So yeah, she comes back from Costco, and I'm like, well, tell me about it. It's been so long since I've done something like that because I'm an internet celebrity, you know? I just can't, I just can't Costco. That's a joke. That's not, I already told you the reason. <laughs> so that now you know that that secondary reason is just a joke, you know? Um, did you get any of the samples? She didn't get no samples. They still do samples. She says she just stayed away from them. That's the only thing I remember liking about Costco. And she said they sell coffins now. Freaking caskets. Like, I mean, that's like the opposite effect of me walking by my Topo Chico. 
Like going, you know, you you go to Costco just to escape reality, don't you? You because nowhere else on earth is there is, is is so much stuff stockpiled unless you're in some weird bunker somewhere, and that's not a good vibe. Like I ain't never been in a bunker that's that's a good vibe. Um, what was my point? Oh yeah, you strolling down the Costco, you're trying to get that good vibe feeling, like that free sample feeling. And then all of a sudden, whoop, what is, what is that? Is that a death box in multiple colors? I don't know, is this one NASCAR themed? I don't, I, you know, I didn't ask any follow-up questions because I freaking, I don't want to hear about caskets at Costco. So she's striking out on the samples. She's foul balling on the caskets. And here I am knowing no other baseball metaphor. <laughs> what did she buy? Um, I can't even freaking remember what she bought. Uh, but you can you can you can drop you can drop fifteen hundred dollars on a decent pink casket. My sources are telling me. Um, I remember nothing that she bought. I'm experienced. I think she just went to say she went with the friend. You know, because you got to use the you got to use that person's card. I'm talking about glasses, right? You asked me about glasses. Oh, we're going to start off with some controversy here. Um, my glass, my go-to glasses that I've had for years. So, I mean, how long have I had those? The last glasses that I've had? It could be a decade. It could be. I was very attached to those glasses. They're, they became a part of my face, and then they broke. They freaking got brittle, they got brittle bone syndrome or something. The glasses version of that. I did, And I feel like, you know what? I should have taken better care of them. And I knew this day was coming because I went back to the place years after buying my original pair. I'll go back to this place, um, shout out to Society of the Spectacle. And I went there and I was like, I'm so attached to these glasses that I'm afraid if something happens to them, do you have another pair? And they did have another pair. Um, L- it was, they're LA Works, I believe is the brand. But um, So I bought the pair. I bought a backup pair. And then I kept them in my car. Or I had them in my car. And um, I actually don't think... They had they they didn't have the prescription lenses in them because something that I was doing, I needed to wear contacts, but then I wanted to still have my glasses, or maybe I just didn't want to pay for the lenses. This is what you're gonna get. This type of meandering shit. This is, I mean, <laughs> was just, it around Buddy just System? In. It could have been around. No, Buddy System was the other glasses. It was those mm. clear glasses that yeah. I got. I know that I bought them just because I was so attached to them, I needed a backup. Um, and I, I had them in the car, in my freaking driveway, and then I get in my car one morning to come to work, and I'm like looking through my console, I'm like, my sunglasses are gone, because I usually put them on before I drive. I don't get people who don't wear sunglasses. This is a tangent, but friggin' wear sunglasses. I mean, my granddad went, he, he, yeah, he had macular degeneration and that, that does, there is a genetic component to that, so I'm, I'm all about taking care of my, my, my eyeballs. And sunglasses are a big part of that. Um, so I'm pretty fastidious about wearing my sunglasses. But like I talked to my kids, they get in the car, I'm like, what? Do you want some sunglasses? It's bright out here. We're driving around, you're squinting. I think I have a pair in here that aren't prescription. You can put, no, no, no. My kids refuse to wear sunglasses. I mean, you know, you're, I gotta talk to Lincoln about this again now that I'm thinking about it, because he's he's 18, you know? He's an adult-ish. And he needs to be wearing sunglasses, I mean, it's, that's it's an it's, if he thought it was an adult thing to do. Well, now you're an adult, man. Step up, protect your eyes, have more visibility. There's some 
there's a safety component to this too. It's like you're driving down the road, you don't wanna be squinting. I dropped Lando off for school today and he was like, and he crosses the street in front of me and I can tell that there were cars coming and then they're driving into the sunlight. And me and all of my wisdom, I'm thinking, well, he's probably not at 13, which is, okay, I have enough time to dart across the street before these cars get here, but he's not realizing that the cars can't see him because of the squint factor unless they're wearing sunglasses. <laughs> You need to be wearing sunglasses. I'm saving a life right now. <laughs> Somebody is deciding to wear sunglasses because of me, and I feel good about that. And you know, while I'm at it, sign up on the bone marrow registry. Be the match. Be the match. <laughs> dot org. <laughs> We're saving lives today. Where are you, Rhett? <laughs> Where are you freaking? You're freaking out. You you. You're on a beach somewhere in Can, Can, Can what, where Cayman Islands. I, Something like, what a yeah. jerk! Mm -hmm. What a jerk! I'm sitting here saving lives with the simple things in life, like like signing up for a registry. All you got to do is it's just a little swab. You swab your mouth, right? Right. That's all I did. That's all you did. And then if you get a match. You know, you do more, but like then you're, it's, it's worth it. The barrier to entry is so small, and you can get sunglasses pretty cheap too. Mm -hmm. Low barrier to entry with the sunglasses thing. And I also tell them, I'm like, listen, it's a it's a way to express yourself. You know, it's fashion on your face, and it's not a re it's not regular glasses that you can get, you can get trapped in some regular glasses. You can wear them for decades and they can become part of your face. And then when they break and your second pair that you were keeping in your car were stolen along with your sunglasses out of your own damn driveway. Like, I mean, just bend me over, pull my britches down. Like, I felt so violated, you know? It was like, this is my driveway. What you, what, it's a dead end freaking street. I live on a cul-de-sac. What are you doing? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just walking down the street. I'm just pulling on doorknobs, man. I'm just pulling on doorknobs and seeing what opens. Oh, so this is my fault? Cause I didn't lock my doors in my own driveway? That does remind me. I was looking for my keys this morning. I couldn't find them. And Lando was like, we got to go. You got to drop me off to school so that I can walk in front of some sun blind driver. <laughs> and I said, well, I can't find my keys. Go see if the car is unlocked because if it's unlocked, the keys are in it. And that's what had happened. <laughs> I don't, so I'm not really learning from my mistakes here, but I, you know, I got a security camera installed point right at that driveway. So the next time somebody steals my glasses or my entire car because I left the keys in it, you can just, I mean, all you got to do, you know, there's no ignition. It's just a button. You open the door. It's like, well, I'm, I'm just walking down the street, seeing, pulling on doors, man, seeing what opens. Then I'm sitting down in the seats and I'm pushing the ignition, seeing what starts. Putting it in drive, seeing what goes. My car. This last night. And all I would have had is, well, it was semi grainy, high angle footage from the security camera I installed when I learned my lesson from my sunglasses and my regular glasses being stolen. So, yeah. All right. I'm still learning my lesson. It's true. So my backup pair were gone, and then my main pair, it was about another, uh, a, a, well, it was months later, I went back to uh, the glasses shop, and I said, I need a third pair because my second pair were stolen, and this is why I got the second pair. So if they were stolen, I would still have a pair, which I do, and they're my first pair. But now I need a third pair that is my second pair. We don't have them anymore, you know, we only, they only make a certain amount and then it's, that's why these things are so cool and why you like them because everybody can't get them. Just sitting, 
Warby freaking Parker, you know? They didn't have them. We went on a hunt for those glasses. And we went on a hunt for those glasses. <laughs> Everywhere I would go looking for glasses, because I was like, you know what, I, I just need to diversify. And over the years, I, I've gotten, I got those Buddy System clear glasses. I got some octagonal black glasses. I, then I got some other black glasses that sometimes I still wear at home. But it's like, they just never took. It never took. When something becomes that much a part of your face, when you take them off and you put anything else on, it's like, whoa, what's wrong? What's wrong with Link, man? Look at his face. Look how blank it looks right now with no glasses on. And then you put other glasses on, it's like, who's that guy? <laughs> and I was like, I just gotta bite the damn bullet and get some other glasses. And then I didn't, and then I didn't, and then I didn't. And then we had my, to super glue your uh, my the... freaking glasses. Yeah, we, <laughs> like I got Lucas Mad Dog is like super gluing my glasses. I got Paisley Dad Magic super gluing my glasses because it would they would break. And I was like, I bet you somebody's got the answer. I took them to a shop and paid a, too much money for somebody to fix them, and then they rebroke. And it, it was just like a, it was right there next to my my the bridge of my nose. It just a, a just a clean break, and I'm wearing them just now just flopping around. And I'm only wearing them on camera and then everywhere else I'm wearing other glasses. I'm like, this is not who I wanna be. This is not my ethos. I don't wanna be somebody on camera and somebody else everywhere else. I don't wanna be the pretend generic version of Link off camera and then the real facially recognized Link on camera. Like I wanna be able to look at my phone and unlock it at all times. I think that works, but. And then they just got more and more precarious and it just like you could see the break and I just wasn't happy with it. And I was like, I have to do this. I gotta get these new, I gotta get some new glasses. And as with everything, it really comes down to what Instagram sells me. Um, Caddis, C-A-D-D-I-S, not a sponsor. They start, you know, I, I started, um, I started seeing their ads. I saw these glasses, which I have. These are called, um, they, they, they sell them as readers. These are the RCA. Um, nowhere on the site does it say anything about Jeffrey Dahmer. Nowhere. <laughs> nowhere on the site. I was like, I'm gonna get the brown ones, I'm gonna get the, I'm gonna get the clear ones. And I'm very happy with these glasses. And yeah, I was like, I have to commit I cannot read comments. I am happy with these, and I am moving forward. You will catch up or not. It can't matter. It just can't. It just can't. So I got my old glasses in like a, well, they're in a Smithsonian ready case. I'm just gonna put it to you that way. <laughs> I have not received any calls, any texts, any emails. I haven't been beeped by the Institute, but those glasses are in a safe, protected space, i.e. not the center console of my <laughs> unlocked car, <laughs> all right? Uh, and then I get these things and I take them in for the, to, to my optometrist to put the um, prescription in it and he takes them from me. He's like, okay, it, it, what, how do you, what do you want? And I was like, I want the freaking progressive. I gotta read close and I gotta see far and I gotta look old when I'm looking at the paper under my nose, like, you know, I read like this. <laughs> and um, he said, well, there's something on the top of these things. It's like uh, Morse code. And I was like, yeah, I, I did notice that. I was like, and I'm giving them to him. So I'm like, I ain't gonna take the time to to try to decipher what that means at this point in a transaction, I got places to be. I'm a, you know, I'm an internet celebrity. I made myself and my friend famous by doing what anybody could do, which is start a YouTube channel. So he said, I said, well, he said, he's a nice guy. He said, um, I'll look it up and if it's something questionable, uh, I'll call you before we fill the prescription. I was like, hey, full service. And I never heard from him. 
So I go and pick these things up and I try them on. I'm like, okay, and he, you know, he fits them. Like, when you get glasses, you gotta go, you, you, you gotta get the, get the person to bend them, get the person to fit them, you know? It's like, don't just slam them on and just walk out. It's like, there's some bending that's gotta happen because you and I are the same, we're humans. Our ears aren't exactly in the same place on either side of our head. Our heads aren't the same on either side. You know, our eyes might be in separate, in, in like slightly different places. The Where it rests on your nose, there might be, you might have a skin tag, you know? Ain't no shame in that. Gotta get them adjusted. I'm saving lives today. I'm feeling good. Now people are getting their glasses adjusted. Man, rat sucks. <laughs> he said, I looked up the Morse code on your glasses. It says Willie Whalen, and then he hands them to me. And I was like, what? Really? No, he said Willie Whalen. <laughs> that's just a, that's a joke that I just made up. <laughs> he didn't actually say that. Um, I was like, I could tell he didn't know what the reference was, so I was like, um, have you, you, you've heard of Willie Nelson, right? He's like, yeah, and Waylon Jennings, he was like, uh, and I was like, well, that's your loss, man. The legendary country music, uh, masterminds, and an iconic duo. So I'm like, this is perfect for me. This is freaking perfect. I could I almost couldn't have asked for, uh, I mean, if if I would have asked for it, I think it would have said Poncho and Lefty, but that's just, that's me. Caddis, call me. Let's get some Poncho and Lefty cooking, cooking up. And um, it's they, they have all, all kinds, but like these RCAs, they, I think they all say Will and, w Will and Willie. So they don't say anything, again, nothing about Dahmer. And then I'm, you know, so, uh, you know, I don't care about those comments. So I'm liking these glasses. When I get home every day, I will, um, I'll take them off and then I'll put on the other pair because they fit a little bit different. And it's, it's nice to, uh, it's kind of like, when I get home, I like to, I like to change. Y'all like to change when you get home? I mean, if you know you're not going anywhere, like I'll, I'll put on, I'll put on a, I'll put on some boxers and I'll put on some sweatpants, and I'll put on a night shirt, a shirt for the night, a soft little t-shirt, something. I have, I have my favorite t-shirts, if they're soft enough, they'll stick with me and they'll become my night shirts. And I'll get into that when I get home. I'll get into, get into the night mode. But changing my glasses, it's like all of a sudden your face feels like, oh, it's, they're rest, the glasses are resting in a slightly different place. And even the two models, they fit a little bit differently. So I kind of like to, I kind of like to get home and get a little, a fresh little teeter. You know, they teeter up here on the, on the brim of my, on the brim of my nose. Anyway, I digress. A lot, but I think it was worth it. I'm gonna sell you this uh, hat. I'm gonna sell it to you at mythical.com. It's um, it's a snapback. It's got it's got the fish netting. It's not full trucker hat, so it's got a little class, and it's got an embroidered GMM logo on the front. So eat your heart out. Anyone who doesn't get them while supplies last. It's a nice, just versatile black cap that, um, you know, if you don't feel like getting your hair right or it's not doing what you want it to do, throw on this mythical hat and you'll, uh, you'll get the looks. Mythical.com. Ear Biscuits is brought to you by BetterHelp. You like to getting to know people? What if yeah. those people are yourself? Oh, that's interesting. You know, because you can get to know yourself in therapy. It's a great way to say, oh, that's why I do that. That's, yes. and of course, I do that on this podcast a lot. 
I try to learn more about myself by bouncing myself off of you. Yeah, just live. But um, I also do that a lot in therapy, and it's extremely helpful. Yes, therapy is a great way to help you get a deeper understanding of yourself because you're always changing and evolving. Good point. Uh, And we're big fans of therapy. Can we make that even more clear? I don't think so. And we want therapy to be accessible to everyone, and so does BetterHelp. Yeah, you know, one of the things that therapy has been so helpful uh, with me is that there are these different roles that you play in in your life, right? So I'm a friend, I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a business owner. And sometimes when I start talking about those different roles that I play, I'll find, oh, there's a lot of anxiety or difficulty, frustration in this one thing. And if I hadn't gone to therapy, had my appointment with my therapist and actually talked through this, uh, it would have just sat under the surface and maybe gone unresolved for weeks. And who knows, began affecting me physically. I mean, that happens with me sometimes when I don't deal with something. Um, Right. That's one of the things, and one of the areas that therapy has been so helpful for me in. Yeah, so if you're thinking about starting therapy, Give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, so you can have your sessions anywhere you're comfortable, and it's suited to your schedule. You just fill out a questionnaire, and they will match you to a licensed therapist that meets your specific needs, and you can always switch therapists at no extra cost. So discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash ear today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash ear. Um, let's click on this one. Hi, Link. I was wondering what helps bring you peace when you're feeling anxious. As an anxious being myself, I really appreciate your existence. Thank you so much. Bye. I only heard half that voicemail because I was thinking, oh, this is a serious question. I got to use my real voice. And I'm like, I don't think I was using my real voice for the first part of this podcast. I think I was using an, I was think I was using an entertainer voice. How did that happen? These are the things that go through my head constantly. And I think that um, that's uh, part, I, I think that's part of my anxiety. You know, it's just like, my brain's kind of running in this like strange gear that is not um it's not conducive to uh sometimes it doesn't feel conducive to a long life you know it's if your brain's running real hot is it hot yeah it's a little bit hot <laughs> um so what and so what did she ask she asked, like, what helps you when you're feeling anxious? Oh, just think about it real hard. <laughs> just, like, just bear down into it. Just think about how anxious you can get and just, like, try to try to make a downward spiral. You're so anxious. <laughs> <laughs> you're making me anxious. <laughs> you know, I never... I don't know. I'm... I... It was hard for me to become convinced that I had something that could have like a a label to it. Um, and I can't even remember the label right now. So like, it's like generic anxiety disorder is what it sounds like. That's not what it's called. Something like that. Um, I, I feel like it really, like it rears its head when there's something coming up that I have to do that I'm just not... Like, I don't feel prepared for it, but I got to go through with it. Like, there's been a lot of things in my life where it's like, you, you find yourself signing up for, I mean, I, pres- I and we have pursued so much in our career that it, it I find myself out of my comfort zone a lot. And I think that's a good thing, but it really kind of highlights where, it went, where where I start to feel the most anxious. And... Uh, in contrast to when things are out of my control, like that's easy for me to um, just kind of check out. Well, there's nothing I can do about that anyway, so um, why worry about it? And I think that happens subconsciously for me. And that's very 
palpable because it's very obvious to me in contrast to like, and I've talked about this before, about how Christy is, has, a, has a flight anxiety. And I love flights because I'm in, for the reason that she hates them, because I'm totally out of control. I can just like sit back and say, hey, this isn't on me. It's why in that those episodes, that episode recently, I was saying I like to be handled <laughs> because <laughs> it takes this pressure off that, oh, it's up to me and you're going to fuck it up kind of a thing. Or this is the moment where it all implodes. This is the moment when you're climbing the mountain and then you look up and there's an avalanche coming down. I got to stop watching this avalanche f- footage on TikTok. Like, I don't know why, or it's Instagram or something. There's sh- I think it's because I was like, I like s- snow skiing. So then it's like, oh, you like snow skiing? Well, here's an avalanche. Here's a POV <laughs> shot of somebody's GoPro. And they're like, and they're always like, oh, bro, look at that. Whoa. And then there's, then it kind of changes to, oh, it's, I think it's going to make it here. And it's like, what? Uh, uh, and then they start moving and like trying to hide behind something. But there's that first moment that's just like, hey, I'm so glad I'm filming this. It's not going to kill me. It's too far away. And then that all changes. That's what anxiety feels like to me sometimes when it's like, oh, I, I got to do this. Um. <sighs> So I try to, well, what, one, of, and it, it, one of the things that is re, like that really lets me know that I'm in an anxious period is when my heart starts to skip beats. That's, at least that's what I call it. It's like you get the heart flutter, and um, I've had it definitely my entire adult life. So when I started my engineering job, I would come home, I'd sit on the couch, and then I would start to, I'd be like watching Seinfeld or something, like a rerun, um, just relaxing. And all of a sudden, it would be like my, my, my heart would kind of, did my heart stop for a second? Uh, what just happened? And then um, – Sometimes I'll be like laying down in bed and there's, it'll, it'll do it. It, it. And I started over time to notice it more and correlate it to times of like extreme stress. Um, and then let's see, at the beginning of 2022 is when I started my, started taking sertraline, the generic version of Zoloft. Um, uh, work, worked up to 50 milligrams and uh, took that every day. And I just thought that in, in combination with being in therapy every week, it would be something uh, that my doctor recommended that I try. And I was very open to it. And I, you know, I have um, close friends, loved ones who have had very positive experiences with uh, SSRIs for treating anxiety or depression. And so I was very open to it. I just didn't think that I was to the point where I needed it. And, um, but I was having those heart palpitations more. I was kind of, I don't know when you when I started to get really anxious, I started to get pretty grumpy too. You know, it's like that's not the that's not the me I want to be. Um, and so I want to see how this can help as part of my holistic treatment plan, not as a silver bullet, but as as part of it. And I also anticipated that uh, 2022 was going to be a, a challenging year, even when I just looked at it from a work perspective. So I say, you know what? Uh, things are only going to get more stressful this year because of reasons. So I think that now's a good time for me to kind of ramp up and see how this works. Um, and that has been 
a very good experience. The thing that I like about the uh, heart palpitations is that it's a pretty definitive measurement. Like it, it's hard times, hard sometimes to like m- measure. It's like you really got to pay attention uh, to whatever you're doing to treat your anxiety to see if it's helping. You know, uh, basically like a a daily mood journal type thing. It was probably a really good idea. And it was hard for me to do, but the thing that made it easier for me was I knew I wasn't having the heart palpitations anymore. So um, it kind of made it a cut and dry victory for me. And then uh, you fast forward to the beginning of this year and a lot of the things that from a business standpoint that we were working through and anticipating at the beginning of last year, I, they, they had kind of, I, we had gone through that. And at the beginning of this year, we were entering a new phase that now we're very much in, which is um, just a creative realignment. We've been talking about it here on Your Biscuits. You've been seeing it on the Rhett and Link channel. You've been feeling it in Good Mythical Morning. And um, hopefully you're seeing it here right now in just my level of ease. Uh, I had zero anxiety about doing this podcast by myself. I think two years ago or earlier, I would have been like my sweat boot would have been smelling weird. You know how when you get a certain type of stress and then all of a sudden it's like, what is that smell? Oh, that's me with a stress sweat type thing. Um, so at the top of this year with this new outlook and like a, a tweaked creative trajectory. Um, I was feeling like I was in a much better place. Um, my therapy has been going really well. Um, and so you, you might know what I'm about to say. And I think this is a common thing amongst in the, in the world of like anxiety medication is I was like, Maybe I don't need the medication anymore. Maybe I don't. Um, but I didn't say, hey, maybe I don't, you know, as if that would be some sort of victory. Um, I did not look at it that way. I think it, it was an honest question in my mind of am I in a am I entering a new season where um there's there's less stressors? So like my my low level anxiety is something that through the other methods that I've been working on through breath work, through therapy, through um, making sure that I have, that I protect my time and space for things that um, improve my mental health, like walking my dog, bipedal stimulation, uh, riding my mountain bike, bipedal stimulation, bipedal. That's I don't want to say that word again. Bipedal, two feet stimulate two two sides of the brain being simulated at the same time. Um, if I employ all of those things and I have the support of family friends, um, I'm curious if I went down on the medication, what would happen? And then I went and I talked to my doctor, talked to my therapist, talked to talked to everybody. And, you know, it's, so I made the decision to do that, to, to reduce my medication uh, starting like a couple of months ago. And um, I think that I'm in a good place. I don't, you know, it's, I, there's still that, okay, am I gonna, uh, am I gonna have the heart palpitations? That, if that comes back and it hasn't, then I know that I'm definitely gonna go back on the medication. But for me right now, I'm in a good place. I'm having a good experience. Um, and uh, so I, I think I'm. I think I'm moving forward without the medication for now. But uh, 
And I titrated off of it. You know, I was working with a doctor on how to do that. So you don't just stop any of this stuff. You don't start or stop cold turkey. That's a bad, bad, bad idea. And so my doctor helped me understand that. And um, so, yeah, I feel like I'm in a I'm, I'm in a good place with all of these other practices, which is the answer to your question. And um, but that may change again in the future. The, the thing that I that I want to reiterate for me was that I didn't get off of it off of some sort of guilt of like, oh, I'm a lesser person because I'm on a daily medication. Like we can, we can fall for this lie that, um, you know, if if you're taking an SSRI that you're, that you're, that you're less for some reason or that you don't have your shit together enough, or fill in the blank with any negative judgment. And let's just, let's just eradicate that. Let's, let's, let's scrape that off the table, um, you know, and forget about it. So I really searched my heart to know that I felt like my motivations were in the place where I wanted them to be to move forward with this Experiment. Um, And I'm not experiencing, like, I know some people, if they go back off of medication, they'll be like, oh, I can, I'm not numb anymore. I can feel more. I I guess it, I, for whatever reasons, for me, I, I, I'm, I'm not experiencing, like, that I'm crying more or that I'm more in touch with my emotions. I, 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 don't, I don't think it was like that. Um, the, I don't think it took those things away from me or, or leveled that out too much. It was just more of um, that low level behind the scenes, just constant hum of tension. You know, when there were that for me was linked to foreboding uh, challenges that I had to face. So it's in my toolkit. I mean, I, I still have the pills. I mean, like, I'm not gonna, uh, I would talk to my doctor and like still have guidance before I move forward with going back on it. But for now, I, I feel like I'm in a good place. So um, that's, that's this chapter of my anxiety story. What's a, let, let's go to a tweet. Oi V O O E tweeted, are you ever gonna make more music videos? Make more music videos. I can't read that right. Can Are you ever gonna make more music videos over on the Rhett and Link channel? Come on, go over to the Rhett and Link channel. Uh, we dug a medium sized hole. It's not a music video, but there's a, there's a song in it. And, let me tell you why the why the cat's away. The mouse has been playing. Uh, Rhett and I worked. Well, we're working on a new uh, Rhett and Link channel video. Um, when it does come out, I'll I'll give you a hint so that like when it does come out, you'll know everything that I'm talking about was related to it. Uh, it's there's a year involved. I'll leave it at that. Um, so leading up to Rhett's vacation, it was like, okay, we decided we wanted to write a song and put into uh, this video. So it's not a music video, but at this point, I'm, I mean, it's, we haven't shot the video. Um, we're still writing, writing the song that goes in the video, but uh, as soon as Rhett gets back from um, vacation, we got like one day back in the office to uh, hopefully record some vocals. And then the next day we're going out and we're filming this thing in one day. That's the plan. I am I am so excited uh, creatively be- with what we're doing on the Rent Link channel because it's getting us reacquainted and getting me reacquainted with uh, writing, recording, producing music. And I don't know that you'll call uh, call this one a music video either, but because we're throwing so many different things at it, it's, I don't know, it's, it's got s- some similarities to the whole video in that there's a music v- 
video-esque part to it. Um, but before Rhett left, we had to kind of cram at the last minute and we were like, okay, we got some chords. We're like gonna demo this song out. And I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this thing while you're gone. I'm gonna keep writing lyrics and we can work on it remotely. As much as you wanna uh, be in touch and be involved, um, we can still collaborate on this thing, but I got this uh, while you're gone. I'm excited to be to like bring this song further along, but we needed to get a chorus before. I mean, it's like the chorus is the most important part. We can just, we can like hum some gibberish for the verses just to give Mark, our producer, an idea of how to like build the song. But the chorus is something we need to like, we kind of need to nail down together because it's, it's just really important and it was set where this thing goes. And we only had like a two hour window. And that's a good kind of pressure because it's exactly what I wanna be working on. And I, I don't know if there's a more exhilarating feeling in my job than having a musical breakthrough. And I've, I'd missed that for so long. Like we had, we'd gotten out of, of writing songs and getting back into it and like having these moments where I just, I'm feeling a breakthrough. Like, whoa, 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 it just happened. It's happening right now. What, what we just came up with is, is, is good. This is gonna, this is what we're hoping for. You know, it's like you sit down with the chords and it's kind of a blank slate and I, I have this feeling. I don't think Rhett has this feeling. I have this feeling. Again, that, that anxiety thing I was talking about, it's like, oh man, I hope we come up with something. I really hope we come up with something. And then it's this relief and release when it's like, we did it, we got it, that's it, that's the spark. Now, the thing that I was so excited about I'm pretty sure it's not gonna change, but even if it did, it wouldn't change the fact that in that moment, like that experience is like, nothing's gonna top that. I, there's other parts of, there's a lot of parts of my experience that are just as exhilarating, but not, I don't think they're more exhilarating than that for me. And so, are we gonna make more music videos? Absolutely. Are we gonna write more songs? Definitely. And this, like, so I was working on the demo yesterday and I sent it out to the team and I haven't heard back from Rhett. I guess he was 60 feet under. <laughs> Scoop yeah. diving. Yeah. <laughs> I if you're like six feet under, you're dead. If you're 60 feet under, you're, uh, you're swimming. He went to he went to Costco. Got a <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I just love that feeling, you know. It's and especially you know in my like in over the past couple of years, like really uh, fanning the flame of my passion for music in general, and now going back to it to writing music. It just feels, it, it's an even more rewarding experience. Um, Erica with a K, did I give you that nickname, Erica? I'd like to think I did. Uh, Erica tweets, since I always seem to put my foot in my mouth when I meet you, yeah, we met a few times, what's your go-to recovery when you find yourself in your own foot in mouth situation. <laughs> I've never been in that situation. <laughs> I've never put my foot in my mouth. I mean, I'm flexible, but I mean, that'll never happen to me. I never I never start speaking without knowing where the sentence is gonna end. <laughs> you know? I don't know what you're talking about. I was, um, I was at a, I'll call it a kickback. It, I, um, uh, we were at a party, it wasn't our party, but we were somehow invited. So we go, Rhett and I went to this part, uh, went to a birthday party, like a sit down dinner. <laughs> After the dinner part was over, everybody was still sitting down and just kinda having some drinks and talking. And so 
we show up with a group of people that invite who were invited that invited us to go with them. So like we show up and like I guess some people when dinner's over, some people left the party. They had other places to be. So there were open seats. I felt a little weird about it. But um we sat down at the end of the table, me and Rhett, and then across from us, a friend of mine and then his friend that I had just met who happened to be like a really established s- songwriter and producer. Um and I would I was kind of piecing that together. It's like sometimes when you meet people who are like really the shit in whatever because of whatever they do, it's like you're not going to know it because when you're really the shit, you're not going they don't stink. You're not going to you're not going you're not going to smell it cuz it's like they're secure in themselves. They're just they're just there because they're they want to be there. They're not there so that you will know who they are. So I I'm kind of piecing it together, Erica, and I'm like, okay, this is a fun opportunity for me to spark up a conversation with this super successful songwriter. And uh, I mean, he's got nobody to talk to but me and Rhett and our other friend anyway. We're down here at the end of the table. And um, I'm like, well, I gotta, I gotta, this is my moment. I gotta come up with something. And I knew that they had, he had been doing some writing uh, that day in the preceding couple of days. And so I was just like, so what's a, what's a line that you came up with that you're particularly proud of? I'm like, this is, I'm, I'm legitimately interested in this. It's about him. It's not about me. And it's, um, I really, yeah, it's like, uh, I don't know what the other thing is, but I was like, okay, this is this is good enough. But like, I was coming up, I was just like, well, nobody's talking. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up with this question. It, it 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 didn't land as well as I thought it would. Like, I don't know. It just seemed maybe a little in, too journalistic. I could think it. I could think it into pieces. The point, and I don't know the reason, but he didn't. He didn't have an answer. You know, it wasn't like, oh, this is making him light up. Like, my goal was to spark conversation that got him to light up because I want to enter his world a little bit. You know, it's like I'm always in mine, and um, I don't know that he wants to, he hasn't asked me about mine, so I'm just not going to start volunteering that information because I'd seem like a dick. Um, but that didn't really work, and I was kind of embarrassed because it was just like, oh, did I... Is that not something you're supposed to ask? And I'm like, I don't listen to that voice. That's not a good voice to listen to. It met my criteria. I was interested and it was others focused too. So there you go. But then I had to regroup. So I didn't, I wouldn't say that was I put my foot in my mouth because it was a decent question, right? It just, I think when you're a songwriter, it, 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 it's a hard question to answer and not, maybe maybe he was thinking, well, how, I, okay, how am I gonna answer this question and not seem like a dick? Well, I wrote this line and wasn't it awesome? You know, it's like, so then I switched it up and I had to make it a little bit about me and Rhett and I was like, you know, we've been talking about um, our creative process and making sure that we take time to stop and celebrate um, the little, especially the little moments, like the one that I was just celebrating with you about um, just that spark in the songwriting process and how it just, uh, I can ride that wave for this entire week um, and finish the song. Like that's what I needed to, to, uh, to do my part to finish the song is get that jolt. So I, we start talking about that and then I'm like, when you're in the studio and you're you're writing and you're in the moment and you're like making this happen, like what is that feeling for you? Like what are those moments for you when you start to feel like magic is happening? And then I got him because his his eyes started to he he started to perk up a little bit and he was engaged and um he just, he was just talking about his the process and that feeling and like the thing that keeps him after all these years of being super successful at it that keeps him engaged and 
chasing that feeling and how it's separate from an audience response or it's separate from external uh, recognition. Basically, the stuff that Rhett and I talked about at this table weeks ago when we were talking about um, the whole video before it came out, like having that conversation with an, with another artist. And um, so I was able to pivot. I don't know what you can glean from that, Erica, but um, maybe it's um, don't. I think when you put your f foot in your mouth, it's like if you're, I don't know, I always tend to err on the side of like giving it a shot. You know, it's, uh, you can always pivot. There's always a second question. You can go in a different direction. Um, and it's, especially if you're, if you're, if you're not making it about you or, and, or not making it about the fact that you felt like you put your foot in your mouth. It's like if, if you're sincere, and if you're engaged, and if you actually care, I think that that type of thing comes through. Um, so just ride on that wave. Well, there's so many questions, and I'm not, I'm going so slowly because I'm such a, such a motor mouth. Christina, also with a K, asked, what was the first thing you thought when you met Christy? Oh, let's talk about Christy. Um, if you've heard the story, Christy and I met uh, in line waiting to go into a roller rink for a Christian college social. Woo! It's getting hot in here. So put on some roller skates. Um, she had gotten there early. She was in basically the front of the line with her group of girlfriends from the all girls college. And I got there late, which allowed me to peruse the entire line of people waiting to go in. And yeah, she caught my eye. I mean, she was a wonderful looking person to me, especially. And she, I just, and she had this personality that like, that matched it, like just jumping, just jumping out of the line. Like she was probably jumping. She's probably, or maybe she was clogging. She wasn't wearing clogs, but she'll break out into a clog. Like don't mess with a girl who knows how to clog. That is a dance for any plumbers out there who just perked up. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's like a country line dance and I don't know, meets S Swedish people? Dutch people? I don't know. I don't ask questions. It's, it's, a lot of it's from the hips down. It's kind of like, it's, it's a little river dance-ish. Anyway, she wasn't actually doing that, but she was, um, she seemed to be the ringleader of her friend group. She was outgoing, um, she was funny, and she had an accent of the Southern variety that made me melt. And she didn't know how to roller skate. And I said, oh, I can fix that. So um, yeah, I taught her how to roller skate. It was super romantic. Um, I tripped her on purpose, and then she grabbed my big ass stovepipe pant leg and pulled me down with her. Um, and we mated right there in front of all the Christians. <laughs> it was awesome. It was awesome. It was sweet. I love the fact that I, and we have there's a picture of us from that night that like floats around. We'll dig it up and I can show it right now. Our styles were very different. Um, she was she was preppy J Crew and I was um, alternative rock wannabe. Um, Laney asks me if you could have a true bromance with anyone on the crew other than Rhett, who would it be? <laughs> who would it be? Who would it be? Um, I I got a little bit of a bromance with Ben. Like Ben, Ben's my my DJ buddy. We hang out. We listen to music. We we we'll we'll spin the wheels of steel together. We'll trade notes. Uh, 
Sometimes that'll happen. Yeah. Um, uh, Chase is my buddy. He's my scuba buddy. And now, um, now that Rhett and Shepard are getting into that, uh, he's not disinvited. Rhett still got to earn his way onto the squad because uh, Chase is my go-to scuba buddy. Um, I can have a bromance with Stevie, but she she won't invite me over to pet her dog. I don't know what gives. I don't know what the holdout is, but I c- I don't think I could have been more blatant about it than than my tweet. Of course, it turns out that she wasn't on Twitter anymore for like years. Maybe that brought her back on Twitter. Um, Jenna, you and I got a little bit of a bromance going on here. You know, it's like uh, you can't you can't work like you you we work as closely as anybody beside me and Rhett. So it's like I mean, it's like this wouldn't work if we didn't like each other. Mm-hmm. Um, but we don't have any out out of out of the office hobbies together. Right. Maybe yeah. that's healthy for yeah. you. <laughs> right. Okay. I get it. I'd say it's healthy. Well, listen, we've we've survived uh, terrible flights together. Oh my I'd god. I'd say that's bonded us more than anything. Oh yeah. All that travel and like going on tour and stuff. Oh yeah. It's like that. That's uh. That's a that's a special type of bond. And then when like yeah, when you almost get slammed into the runway. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I'll, t- I'll and tell that, that story. That was just you, and me. That was, that was just us. Yeah, Rhett wasn't there for that. Um. <laughs> I tell that story occasionally because, you know, there's always the, like, the flight story comes up. Everybody has their flight horror stories. And, um, yeah, it, we, were, we were trying to land in a hurricane. Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, sometimes you'll hit, we like, We weren't. A, the, the pilots, I was, we were just, we were I was, just. I was gritting and, I was gritting in <laughs> my teeth. I was, tr- I was trying to. I, was like, I accepted, I accepted my thing. fate. <laughs> I like yeah. put on some Dolly Parton and I was like, if this is how it goes, this is how it go. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Cause when a, f- you know, if you're flying and all of a sudden you hit this air pocket and then poof, you're like, you lose elevation. And then it's just like you're free falling for a second. That's scary. Mm-hmm. But when you're landing and that happens, that's really scary. Mm-hmm. And then we're like, okay, is this thing going to, are we gonna do a backflip and then land? Is this like, is the pilot trying to make an Olympic move here? I, I, t- I love that, I'm glad that I told the complete fresh, juicy version of the story here on Your Biscuits. You have to dig that one up because <laughs> I can't remember it like I did then, but I remember enough of it to know that like, we did, we got as close as you can get to landing and then mm-hmm. so he took off again. Yeah. And then we landed at another airport and we got off of the plane, and then you were like, I don't know if you said anything, but all I remember now, this version of the story is <laughs> you disappeared. I did. And then when you came, I was like, when we came back to get on the other flight, I was like, what? Where you been? You were like, I, I'm, I've been at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. You got you got in line for food, and I, um. Yeah. And you were like in line waiting for food with everyone. And I was like, uh, well, I'll, I'll be back. Like, uh, I'm not hungry. And <laughs> I went to the bar and, and took yeah. two two shots of whiskey immediately. Ooh-wee. I it went was, up to a bartender like, what do you need? I was like, whiskey. That was the, it was the worst <laughs> flight experience I've ever had. So it's like, yeah, we're, we'll always have that. <laughs> we'll always bro. have that. The beautiful sunset after the almost crash. And they oh, you remember us. that? I remember that. I remember I, I remember the almost landing that didn't happen. And then we had to go to another airport. And we went up above the clouds. And it was like the prettiest sunset I ever saw in my whole life. <laughs> and you were drunk. That was that was before, though. Oh. That was before. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was before. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. What what's a can't miss for you here before we uh, before we get? I know there's. Well, I wanted to hear Red the did, bromance. Like, the rapid fire thing. I wanted to hear the bromance because oh. I, I hoped you would say that I was one of those, which you oh. did. So that I was. Well, happy. you were. I mean, you were. You were giving me the 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 sad eyes. The sad eyes, like, no, please. You guilted me into it, bro. <laughs> he's like he said Ben. He said Chase. He's like he's like even look over at me. <laughs> <laughs> Who else am I missing? Who's who's listening to this and saying I thought I, I thought I was your bro. <laughs> so before we go into rapid fire, what 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 else? I didn't. What else is the good one? Um. 
I'm I'm trying to remember what uh, this uh, this other, uh, Erica who has a C. Erica is lost in the music. I'm trying to remember what they're talking about from Sex Timber. Oh, <laughs> I okay. think I know. I feel kind of silly at, for asking, but back in Sex Timber, y'all were each gifted something. Uh, you said you'd give your opinion on your experience with it, but I don't think you ever did. Inquiring minds want to know about that butt plug. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, uh, I figured Rhett would be really open to uh, discussing. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, um, I've got I've got a report. <laughs> um. But you're gonna have to wait till September to hear it. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to leave a big teaser, but uh, yeah, I, you know, I can't be talking about that without my without my buddy back in his saddle over there. <laughs> <laughs> and because of what it is, it's like that just seemed weird to say it that way. Yeah, to say so, it as, as all right. Saddle. So you're gonna have to wait on that one too, Jenna. You're okay. gonna have to wait. <laughs> y'all, y'all tell me at some point before then. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, and I'll have more, you know, as time passes, I'll have more to tell. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. All right, let's see, is there any other, what is this? Let's click on this voicemail. Hey, Link, my name is Aaron. I'm from San Jose, California. Um, I know that you love mountain biking, and so my question to you as a fellow mountain biker myself, is just what kind of bike do you ride and what are some of your favorite trails in the LA area? Have a great day. Oh man, why, why? I can't even remember the type of bike that I ride. Like, here's the thing about me and the stuff when I do the things. Like, yeah, I love mountain biking. I, I've, I think I might be able to get on it this afternoon. Um. I honestly can't remember what brand it is. I think it's a specialized, um, but you know, for a price, it can be anything. You know, so come at me, mountain bike people. Let's work together. Um, but yeah, I'm not typically. I'm like my friend Nick is like my number one mountain biking buddy, and one of the great things about Nick is that. He, whenever he gets into something, he knows everything about it. And I like being the guy with the person who knows everything about it. You know, again, it's just like, it takes the pressure off. Like, I don't have to worry about what pressure I should ride my tires at. Or if I start to get this squeak, like what, what do I do about it? I don't even have to search Reddit because got, I've got a buddy. So Nick's got my back, and it's, um, I mean, I'm not using the guy. Uh, he's a good friend. We enjoy riding together. Um, but it certainly is an added benefit to be like, hey, what type of bike do I have again? <laughs> he's like, uh, I, he probably knows everything about my bike in addition to his bike and the places to go. And um, But in terms of the places to go, I've got a few, I've got like a, 45 minute ride that I can do. And then I got a two hour ride that I can do. And then there's other places around, but I'm kind of a creature of habit. So I kind of tend to stick to those pl two places. And I ain't gonna tell you where they are, you know? The two hour ride is the one where I broke my collarbone. And um, I think there was another question in here about, about the collarbone and my recovery from that. Yeah, from a uh, hippie counselor. What? Where what, is it? Yeah, what has your experience been like uh, post rec in regards to getting active again? Breaking my collarbone was was a big setback. At the end of the year, I anticipated it being the type of thing that like it made my top ten of the year because uh, I don't know. It's just it's had all these ripple effects in terms of like me continuing to be active again, like. Uh, you know, 10 weeks is a long time to to not be doing stuff, like 
that you love, like getting on your bike. And so I'm actually still working up, like trying to rebuild my cardio. I haven't done the two hour run yet. Like maybe I'll do it today. Maybe I'll do it this weekend. So, you know, here we are in April and I'm still, you're still recovering from like that, getting to a point where I can get back to where I was Thanksgiving of last year. And that does have an impact on on how I ride a little bit. I mean, it's I've I've tried to take the pressure off myself and say, I'm slowly working myself back up and I'm not I'm not I'm not doing anything really crazy. And I haven't gone on anything yet. Like when I go on the two hour ride, there'll be a couple, there'll be the place where I had the accident. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. I think I might take a 40 up there and just pour it out, pour one out for my, for my old collarbone configuration. I'm not going to drink any of it. I'm going to pour it all out and then I'm going to keep going up and I'm going to come back down. But there's a couple of places in there where coming back down, it'll get tedious. But like the thing that I learned is you got to have your guard up. You got to be present pretty much you can't zone out too much because when you're at speed like I just can't allow myself to do that that's a lesson that I learned um and when I'm going back down I'll, I'm I'm going to be more cautious cuz I'll be thinking about like is it worth the additional thrill of going that much faster here taking a little bit of a risk to then be knocked off my game for another 10 to 12 weeks And I got off easy, you know, like I wasn't in a lot of pain. Like I felt like it was the best way for me to learn that lesson. But I've been on my bike enough to discover that I don't, I don't have a fear. I don't have a newfound uh, like fixation with falling, um, which is a relief because I was kind of concerned about that. I was like, and then two days ago, was the first time that I got back on the one wheel. And that, I mean, mountain biking, there's a certain, there's certain zones where you gotta really be present. Um, but when you're on that one wheel, you kinda always have to have your guard up a little bit more. So I've been more nervous to get back out on that thing. But um, after going snowboarding and skiing, I was like, I, I, I'm gonna do this. And uh, it was fun. It was fun because when when Lando uh, took a fall and broke his wrist, he got on the one wheel a few more times, but then he basically hung it up. Like I just couldn't, he was a lit, he just like, he couldn't get loose enough to enjoy it after that. And um, I'm just glad that didn't happen to me. That's where I'm at. Um, let's do some, let's do some rapid fire. I want you. I want you to just read them, and then I'm just going to, like, answer. Okay. But it's such a strange world we live in, like, that I operate in. Like, there's so much of, like, ask me anything kind of (laughs) vibes. You know, it's like the fact that, I don't know, sometimes I just think, what what a strange position to be in where it's like, hey, I'm going to talk for over an hour about me, and I and you're interested, so ask me about me. You know, isn't that? That's why I. That's why I had the idea for the get. I had I had a guest I was excited about having on this episode because I'm not as I'm not really a fan of all of this. Ask me about me stuff. It's like I don't know. I had fun though. I did have fun. And I I do really appreciate the interest. The fact that I can like take a device, type out, I'll answer any questions you got if you're interested. And then you got all these people asking me questions. And then they want they want me to talk about myself. I don't know. I feel better saying what I just said given everything that I've already said. And I think that's why I said it. But the guest that I was going to have on, um, I still want to make that happen. I st- that's going to happen, right? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to make that happen. All right. So uh, enough about me. Let's talk some more about me. Rapid fire this time. 
I hate rapid fire. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay. Uh, from Chicago Mark, should the name Sarah end with an H or not? Uh, yeah, and it should be pronounced. Sarah. It's there. It's there. It's just like there should be an H in white because it needs to be pronounced. <laughs> I cannot say it in my house without people just just laying into me. White. White. There's an H in it. Sarah. <laughs> Sarah. Sarah. Stones of away. Oh, Love that song. From Rebecca Bryson and Rebecca? you. Rebecca. Rebecca. Rebecca Bryson. <laughs> Rebecca Bryson, M U. Uh, the Tuck. Did it hurt? Oh, you're talking about. Um, when you go drag, I don't know if it's called go drag. <laughs> I'm still learning. Um, you, I was, I learned to do the tuck. Ah, uh, no, it wasn't. Um, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. I was also wearing like, I think it was eight layers of tights, and so my toes were like already like smushed. And then I crammed my foot into a high, high heeled shoe. And that is painful. Mm -hmm. Pain is beauty. Painful with an H. <laughs> painful. So I think I was distracted from um, my testicles being, being somewhere like up in my bladder and my, 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 my wiener pointing folded back on the taint. I'm not going to be more specific than that because uh, that was more specific than I anticipated. I'd say that's pretty specific. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> At Taco Bell is good. Favorite fast food joint? in and out I mean, it's got to be. That, when, I, when I feel like I really want to treat myself, that's the first thing I think of. K Once Upon a Life asks, what is a trait you value most in other people? I'm going to echo something I said earlier. I think sincerity. You know, I think if you... Is that... I'm sure that's not the only one. I, there's got to be at least three other ones that tie with that. But that's what I'm going with today. You know? Don't give me lip service. Mean it. Want it. Put your heart into it. At Fomal Hot. Three three three. Okay. Uh, a, a hot, hot, maybe formal hot. Three three three. Uh, what's your ideal me time? An activity you enjoy doing alone, other than mountain biking. Other than mountain biking, <laughs> um, am I alone if I'm with my dogs? Petting my doggies is, is my number one hobby. Um, number two is probably mountain biking. What else do I like to do alone? Um. I mean, definitely listen to music. I mean, uh, no news there. Like, headphones it up, lay in bed, grab a new album, and just go with it. I'll give you my rec now since it ties into that. Uh, Larry June and The Alchemist released an album called The Great Escape. And I'm obsessed with this, with The Alchemist. This guy, yeah. It, he conjures. It's a, he's he's got a great moniker because like it's um the vibe that he conjures is so laid. I, I really like the laid back stuff. And uh, if you just concentrate on what he's done, and then you're like, okay, what if I was a rapper, and then I had to lay something over top of this? What on earth would I do? And then I think that will that helps unlock just the uh, this the the magnetic uh, collaboration between him and Larry June when like with what he's what he's putting over top of that like I I love to think about that you think about how something was made and it's like when you take something apart and you isolate it 
and then you try to decide how was how did how did they inspire each other to put this together and it's um it's it's a vibe it's a vibe it's a fun album cover too i would i would just buy it just for the album cover uh and i think i'm going to do that mhm cuz i'm now justifying my album purchases as also decoration you know when you think about oh i'm going to buy this piece of art to go on my wall it's like well if you're going to drop you know yeah, you could drop forty. You could drop forty, sixty dollars on like something that you're gonna hang on your wall. And you're gonna look at it again and again and again and again. And um, and I had it all wrong. I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm thinking so frugally, like I do. I'm like, well, I gotta really, really like this album, and I gotta really commit to sitting down and listen to it on the vinyl, and I gotta do this and I gotta do that to justify the purchase. Now I'm just saying, no, it's a cool looking album, and it means something to me, so I'm gonna hang it up. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to I'm gonna change out my albums at the Creative House. It's like they've been the same too long. Next, that was that was real quick. Okay, <laughs> I'll keep on with the music. So at oh. Char- uh, Charon Joel, what artist dead or alive you haven't seen in concert and you wish you could see? Um, I would like to see Tupac. Open for the Beatles. Okay, same person, different question. What song would you consider perfect or almost perfect? Uh, I'm always on a mountain when I fall. The reason why it's not perfect is because um, Merle didn't actually write it. But that performance and the production makes it my favorite, my favorite. And last question is uh, uh, from the same person. Is there a song that makes you instantly happy? Uh, <laughs> it's got to be Easy Lover, Philip Bailey, Phil Collins. That's, I mean, you hear that opening riff and it gives you goosebumps. Back in that episode of Good Mythical Morning, way back in the day when we were like, we tried to like to give ourselves goosebumps and it, that was easy for me. Just play that song. That's That's happy mode activated. Metallic Almonds asks, Link, what is your preferred method for cleaning your glasses, both at home and out on adventure? I haven't settled on anything great yet. We got these alcohol wipe thingies that are like, they look like condoms, right? And, um, well, they the package looks like a condom package. I'm not sitting there wiping my glasses with a condom. Uh, but interestingly enough, that when I that is my other answer, just <laughs> uh, lubricated condom. No, that wouldn't work. Um, nothing beats hot, hot water and dish soap, and then an ultra clean, dry towel. Uh, but honestly, I end up using a uh, paper towel. I think people people say don't use a paper towel, but nothing is going to get my glasses cleaner than hot, hot water and some Dawn liquid dish soap. And you you wet and you wash the whole glass. Wash every part of the glasses. Don't just wash the lens because it's, it's been through it. And when it gets stolen out of your car, you're going to want them to be clean. It's like, damn, these are the cleanest glasses I've ever stolen. They're not my prescription. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. That's the sad thing about that story is that like, what did they do with my glasses? Like they were just trying to find like high dollar sunglasses of which mine they took as well, but they're prescription. And odds are they're worthless to you, you jackass. You, they, he or she probably, or they, I don't know your pronouns, but I hate you. <laughs> for stealing my glasses. And then you probably just threw them away. When you put them on, you were like, oh my God, instant headache. Both pair. Like that's the irony is that you stole my glasses and they were good for no one else. Like, I don't know. I guess you can pop out the lenses and like take them and get them replaced with something. But you think some like petty cul-de-sac thief is gonna do that? No. They're just gonna chuck them. 
I probably could have walked down the street, and if it was trash day, I probably get to look through everybody's trash cans and found my damn glasses. See what you've done, you, Jenna? You put me in a mood. <laughs> Play Easy Lover. Oh God, play it. I go. I'll put you in a. Uh, there's a. I'll give you a better question. Well, not a better. Their question wasn't bad. It's just let's give you a question. Did that I puts answer you, it? I think you did answer okay. it. Yeah, paper towels. That's what you need. <laughs> Uh, from Hannah A. Perkins. I got a good one. If you could own any animal in the world as a pet, the animal is domesticated and will not kill you, what animal would you own? Um, a white tiger. To protect the glasses? To protect the freaking glasses. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know who this guy is on platforms. That's like wrestling with tigers and pretending to be Tarzan. And there's a Tarzan. This is the type of shit that Rhett knows about, but, and I don't care for it. But it does come across my feed. This guy just like loving up on tigers. And I'm jealous. I am jealous. I mean, to have that much power just to like, you are the, the pet. Like, <laughs> you become the pet. Like, can I snuggle up with you in your bed? Like, I like the idea of that. Just like, Getting lost in the arms of a tiger. A tame tiger. I love that idea. I mean, I bet you... Sokka... See, Jade is like the... Jade is the softest dog ever, and I love her because she's so soft. But you know what? Sokka, the cat, is softer than Jade. I got to be real. Now, he doesn't cuddle or snuggle usually. And, uh, but I just got to think, uh, like a, a well groomed tiger? Whew, I would just, man, I would just like to just crawl up, crawl up in next to the belly of that tiger and just, you know, the, the, I said it was a white tiger, but I take it back. I'm gonna say like a orange Bengal tiger. They're so beautiful. And they got that white belly. That's the human spot. That's where the human sleeps. The pet human. Like I'd be on a I'd be on a leash for that bitch. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Um, hashtag your biscuits. Let me know what you think about anything let me know what you stink <laughs> uh and of course you can always leave us a voicemail one eight 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 ear pod one this was fun thanks for the support jenna jamie Brett, you suck man you suck dude you suck hi link i hope you're having a good solo episode i was just calling to say that over the last six to eight months as someone who enjoys all of the content that you put out. I just want to say that I have noticed a, a really um, distinct difference, I think, in, in you from uh, when you kind of started your, your therapy and when you started talking about your medication with anxiety um, and who you are now. And I just think it really shows um, that you've grown into a much um, fuller person. And I say that with no uh, disrespect to your former self. Um, but I just want to say that it was it's really inspiring as someone else who um, deals with anxiety on a general basis to see you grow into someone that you're completely comfortable as and completely happy as. So thank you so much for everything you do. I really appreciate it. Bye-bye. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.